So I thought I'd do a quick update on my terrarium. It's been a while, I guess. And uh, since the last time I made a video, I haven't really touched them much. I just gave them water like every week or so, but haven't really fertilized them, haven't really trimmed them or anything. See the dead pictures are kind of building up there and the moss is getting overgrown. So yeah, I haven't really um, did any tidying up for a while. So I thought I was going to go in, do some trimming, clean everything up. Um, I started removing some of the dead pictures on my Seps there, but I thought, you know, before I clean everything, let me just give you guys a look at how the plants are currently doing. I guess maybe there'll be a before and after. So this is the before. See some of the helium flora are flowering back there. Um, I haven't really tried to pollinate them or anything. It's a bit more of an evolved process for hel helium for us. See the sanguini is getting way too big, starting to push some of the pots over. Um, all the helium flora are doing pretty good. Some of them are flowering back there. It's a heterodoxa. I don't actually know if it's a true heterodoxa, but it's getting big back there. This one I probably have to move down to a lower level because the flower stalks are like touching the the rooftop up there. There's a few new additions. I think that one is a, a H minor pilosa, or the, the, the hairy one. Uh, that one's kind of new, so nothing too much to talk about it until I get some new pictures. There are some other new additions here. These two are also new. It is a Hubie and a Ionesi. I, I don't know how to pronounce their names. And a Colina, which I got a while back also. Um, but yeah, I'll go over them in detail after I clean it up a bit. I just want to give you guys a look at how it looks like right now in this more of a primal jungle state. Down there, there was a little hamada. I got a new hamada down there. It's getting kind of overgrown with the moss. Probably had to trim back the moss a lot. And I have to remove some of the star moss. So star moss, I, I mean, some people like it. I feel like it's kind of like a pest. So I go in with a tweezer and I pull them out. But it takes a while. Uh, so once the star moss gets in there, it's hard to get out. So I have to uh, clean it up a bit. And I probably want to segment off some more of the, the red sphagnum. So the red sphagnum seems to be doing good down there. But in some of the other pots, they kind of got, you know, pushed out. And this, this pot's doing kind of okay. I remember I tried to get some red sphagnum out into a different tray have them propagate but they haven't really grown um, either they're very very slow I mean just pretty slow or I just let it dry out one too many times and they're just kind of set back a bit but yeah um, yeah I'll, I'll go over the plants in more detail right now I just want to give a quick look at how it looks like before I do the trimming back also I got a, a tenui Nepenthes tenui back there the growth point was kind of dead um, when it came I don't know what happened maybe it was something doing shipping but a little bud came off the side and it started growing again, so that's fine. This is a dubia, started vining. It hasn't really made an upper picture since it vined, but I think one is starting right there, one in the middle. But I'm gonna have to like tie it back a bit or somehow or somehow deal with it. A lot of these nepenthes, they they can get pretty big, so they're not really terrarium plants in any sort of way, but you know. Now this one's gonna be tough to deal with. This uh dubia picture, you can see it's like almost full of liquid. It's like all the way at the brim there. I don't know why. Sometimes they just um, fill up and up. I thought it was because I was feeding them with the osmocote pellets and maybe uh, because of like osmosis or whatever, it started drawing water out from the pitcher, from the plant into the fluid. Uh, but this one I didn't feed at all. It's just, I just left it like that and it just filled itself. Uh, so I don't know, it just likes to keep a full pitcher of fluid. Uh, it's gonna be hard to move anything in there without spilling that one. Probably gonna have to siphon off with some uh, pipette or something. Uh, this one is a vetriae. It hasn't really developed any stripes. Uh, I don't know if this is a stripe form. It's not really like a a good cultivar or anything. I think it's just a random one I got just to see if I could grow it. Maybe in the future I'll try to get one of the really nice looking squat ones. Uh, and there is a Ar Aristocoides, however you pronounce it, one of my more favorite ones, but it's still a bit little baby back there and a couple of Ceph's back there are like the ones I kept in the terrarium. I didn't have any dormancy for them. I just wanted to see how they were doing. Seems like they're actually doing pretty good in there, you know. Um, but we'll see if they collapse next summer. But they seem to be doing better than the ones outside, cause probably because it's a bit more humid in there. So down here, the Cephs are doing good also. I, you know, I started pulling off some of the dead leaves and I was like, maybe I'll do a quick before video beforehand. Some of the, the pings are over here going to dormancy. It looks like there's a little growth point coming out from the holes in this pot here. <laughs> Gonna have to deal with that somehow. But yeah, I haven't really fed any of them at all for the last few months. I haven't touched them at all. No trimming, no pulling off dead leaves or than, than the few I started doing here. Just let them do their thing. One of my, I guess, more disappointing failures is this little tuberous drosura. 
bucket. I, I got a few tubers. Uh, they looked like, you know, they looked very plump and everything. I put them in there, but none of them grew. I don't know what happened to them. And then also my uh, little Venus fire trap uh, flower stock cuttings. They were doing okay. I think the dormancy, I, I let it dry out too much, way too many times. Never let your plants dry out. Um, <laughs> that's one way to kind of set them back a lot. They're still alive in there. I probably need to seg segment them out into little pots and everything. But I've just been way too lazy. Um, but yeah, I need to clean everything up a bit. It's going to take me a while, so I'll probably make another video uh, either spliced into this one, but it'll probably be, like time-wise, it'll be delayed by a few days. So it'll be a few days apart because it's going to take me a bit of time to go through each pot and clean it up a bit. But yeah, this is how it is right now. So I'm just doing a tiny bit of maintenance right now, picking out some of the dead uh, pictures. So what you want to do is, uh, like let's say, like this one, right? The dead pitchers, um, I mean, they don't really hurt the plant. It's just that they kind of start getting moldy a bit, which might, you know, eventually spread if the plant is weak. And also it kind of crowds the crown, so it gets kind of stuffy in there. And it makes it, like, more suspicable to rot. So usually the dead pitchers, they just pop right off. This one didn't pop off really cleanly. You could see it didn't come off with the stem. Um, this sort of stem is still down there, I guess. Let me see if I could poke the stem out. It's not really necessary, but yeah. If it if it sticks, don't force it. You know, this one popped out cleanly, so it came with the stem. That that means it's uh it's ready to go. Oh, I think I could I could kind of grab onto the stem here. There you go. That's probably a bit more forced than I liked it, but you could see like uh I don't know if it's it you could see on the camera, but the little bits of fungus spores, the mold spores, are just flying off it. So yeah, these things get moldy, and they spread their their spores around. Uh, yeah, so I'm just slowly peeling off any old dead stuff I see just to give the leaves underneath some light. And uh, if there's any that uh, are, you know, like kind of hard to get off, I don't. I try not to force it. If it's pulling the plant out of the pot, then that means it's not dry enough yet to come out and requires a bit more time before, before you know, it could be pulled off. Some of these little ones seem to be not dry enough, but maybe some of these bigger ones, like this one out pretty easily although this one didn't come with the stem so when I say that it didn't really come out real clean there but yeah that's what I'm gonna be doing uh, just pulling off these old pictures so this one came off pretty clean uh, I actually never pulled off a flower stalk before I don't really know if this looks like I need to get some scissors it doesn't really come off that easily uh, but yeah let me just slowly go over all of these. Yeah, this one. See, that's how that's how easy it's supposed to come off. The the squat is doing pretty nice. So I probably need to feed all these pictures. I haven't fed them in quite a while, and uh, probably need to repot them when spring comes around. This one seems like it's not ready yet. Yeah, see. It's like pulling the whole plant with it, you know, just maybe I'll leave it there. Uh, maybe I'll give it a few tugs from different directions once I get can get at it at a better angle. All right, so I'm just doing some trimmings. Uh, it's taking a while, so it's probably going to take me the course of a few days just to slowly go over it. I'm not going to do it all at once, I guess. But uh, yeah, it's uh, some progress, I guess. I cleaned out the pachella pot, you know, removed all of the extra bits of star moss. Like the star moss, uh, I don't know what moss it is, but whatever this moss is like, in this pot, it's not, it's not my type of moss that I like in there. I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter, but it forms kind of like a dense mat at the surface and it crowds out the sphagnum. Um, if anyone knows how to get rid of that moss, let me know. Uh, I don't know if it's like an environmental condition kind of thing. Maybe if it's on a drier side, that moss uh, performs better than sphagnum. And maybe I have to keep it more moist. I, I don't really know. I mean, on this side, it's pretty moist, but I still get some pots where the star moss takes over and the other pots where the sphagnum moss takes over. So I don't really know what the, the difference is. But yeah, I, I kind of go in and remove as much star moss as I can. Um, and then, you know, kind of flattened out the, the sphagnum a bit. All right, so I finished with some of the cleaning on the left side here. So we could look at some of these plants. I still have a bunch to do, like all the stuff this side and over are still not clean yet. Um, but I have to go through those. Oh my lord, there's a lot more to untangle in there. <laughs> but yeah, um, I moved the, what is this, the pochella down to the bottom here. 
because uh, the flowers are getting a bit tall. One of the flowers kind of bloomed. So that's how a Heliumphora flower looks like. In case you've never seen one. It has a whole bunch more stalks. There's, uh, what is it, three, four? There's four here. Oh, there's one hiding back there. So five flower stalks in total. It's pretty cool. Uh, I have a new addition. This is a, a red hairy Hamada. So it's very, very small in there. And then, uh, yeah, nothing to say about it for now. All right, I'm just going over some of the plants to um, remove some of the uh, star moss. I have to vacuum up my area a bit later. But like, for example, like you can see the, well, first of all, the sphagnum moss is getting kind of crazy. So I'm just going to basically snip off the top layer and then put it into some other pots where I don't have the sphagnum. Um, to trim it back a bit but you can see inside the sphagnum there's some bits of star moss in there like the little star bits and then some of the star mosses have um like little fruiting bodies that they use to spread their spores i think i pulled most, most of them out um they just a little stalk comes up and don't know if i could find one in here yeah like this guy right here right so you know, i just pulled those out i mean the star moss doesn't really hurt it's just that it's kind of like a pest and it hurts uh Hurts the sphagnum growth a bit because it kind of crowds out the sphagnum. There's a nice red clump here. I might try to harvest this a bit. Um, I also do a bit of a cleanup with like the dead pitchers. Uh, if if I could pull them out, well that one doesn't really come out. If I just pull it out, uh, so that one wasn't really ready yet. Uh, if it if it doesn't come out in one piece, then it's like not ready yet to be pulled out. Something like this. Yeah. So see, it comes out in one nice piece then that one was ready to come out if it doesn't come out easily then um not ready yet so i'm just gonna go around pulling out all the dead stuff i could see and then uh you know try to clean up the moss a bit so yeah there we go it's a nice piece and uh yeah hopefully get all this stuff cleaned out my barcelona was just it's just getting too wild i need i need to think of some way to handle it because it's not really like a, a tidy plant uh, it's kind of just growing everywhere. Maybe I'll cut off the offshoot or something and try to get a rooted cutting out of it. But it, it I mean, it, the, the vines are long. It's it's very um, sprawling out, you know, kind of thing. So we'll have to see. Anyways, I'm going to spread the moss around some of the pots um, and then clean it up a bit more. So yeah, so I think I finished up with most of my cleanup. Now I just got to like snip off the moss. Uh, you can see there's a nice clump here. Like everywhere where it's kind of overflowing the pot, I'm probably going to cut back. Like this mat here is very dense. You know, you just got to be careful. Like sometimes there's little pitchers buried in there. You can see there's a couple of little juvenile pitchers buried in there. So I got to cut around that. But yeah, this mat is kind of dense here. So it might be um, squeezing out the plants a bit. I mean, the plant doesn't really care. I think it grows to rocks and stuff, right? But it's just that it's getting a bit dense. Uh, so there, here's a nice clump that I can harvest. Uh, yeah, and then... Just snip these off and put them into other pots. And then um, just looking through to look for any little bits of star moss that are left. Usually they hide in these little dark crevices. I think they like grow better in the shade compared to sphagnum. Like it's, um, the sphagnum does well with higher light conditions maybe. And uh, the star moss does better in the lower light conditions. Although star moss can probably just grow anywhere. I think it's just hardier overall. Uh, it's just that in higher light conditions, the sphagnum can kind of grow a bit faster maybe to outcompete the moss. It's just that it's very hard. Like the star moss is just uh, so fast. Uh, but yeah, let me uh, do some more trimming and then uh, add this to the other pots. Is this that dead pitcher? No, that's a new pitcher. Okay, never mind. It was just kind of brownish on the camera. But yeah, I mean, here is the Ewok uh, Expendiculata, I think it's called. Yeah, I probably need to divide it up a bit or... Give it a new pot. Uh, a few nice new pictures coming up too. It's very uh, hairy. You see the little little hairs on it. It's kind of cute. Uh, just like the little Ewoks in Star Wars. But uh, yeah. Uh, back here is, what was this? Kalina? Oh, gotta be careful. Uh, I think this one's Kalina. Uh, I need to populate the pot with some more um, sphagnum. Just move this pot back a bit. And uh, I think Kalina, uh, is this a Kalina? I think this is a Kalina. But yeah, looks pretty cool. Some of these pictures have like a, a slit and some of these have 
a little hole. I forget if called needle is supposed to have a slit or a hole, but it seems kind of weird. Transitory thing going on there. Um, it's actually some genetics thing. Like you could trace back a f only a few uh, types of pitchers have uh, a slit. And it's like a evolutionary adaptation from the hole. Like the hole came first, I think. Uh, that was what, and what it said on the Wikipedia page, at least. And then the slit evolved afterwards. Uh, so yeah, it's kind of interesting. I'm just working on some of my other helium fire plots. This one is the Expendigalata. It's doing okay. I pulled out most of the dead ones. Some of these dead pictures still have like a little bit of green at the bottom, so I'm not gonna mess with those. Uh, most of the dead ones should be able to just pull out real easily. Uh, this is my Newtons that was, uh, it came really big. It was a juvenile one, but it came really big and impressive. It had a huge root system, but I don't know. It just collapsed like the very next day. It was the fastest like helium bora death I have ever seen. It was like, it just completely withered away. It didn't go brown. All It just completely, like imagine if something was acclimated to something that's very high humidity, um, go into an environment where it's like a desert condition. It was something like that. It was just completely dry. Um, but the thing is, my, my my terrarium isn't that, like, dry. And I, get, I put a cup over it and everything, so it wasn't, like, you know, completely dry. So I don't know what, what was wrong with it. Maybe it was the temperature, like, maybe during shipping, because I got it during, like, the um, fall, winter kind of days. Maybe it was, a, it was a bit too cold for it. I don't know what happened, but, um, yeah, when it came, it just instantly died. So I thought it was completely dead. Um, it, it was all rotten and everything down there. Um, so I just, like, I was going to toss it out, but I was too lazy, so I just put the... A container still in the terrarium for a while and apparently like little shoots started appearing and then it came back alive uh so you could see I, i'm just replacing the top layer of this uh soil media because since i didn't really um you know i thought it was completely dead right i just kind of let it dry out a few times and uh i think the star moss has taken over because uh well first of all i didn't add any live moss in here to begin with because i, I just kind of gave up on this pot uh but yeah, so without any live moss, the star moss would just start to uh, take over. And then uh, since it was drier, I think the star moss also does better in a drier condition. So I'm just going through with some tweezers uh, and pulling out bits of the, the star moss. And I'm probably going to replace the top layer of the soil media with some live moss. Maybe just from this pot too. Like just, I'll just do some trimmings and put them in here. Uh, but yeah, you could see all the little, uh, I don't know what these are called in terms of like the scientific name. They're, they're, it's not like the rhizome runners maybe. I don't know, uh, but little division and they're very fragile so i'm not gonna i'm just gonna gently lay some sphagnum on top uh these are like the ones that are underground still so they haven't emerged the surface so they're still white uh, but yeah there's a whole bunch of little growth points like like this one is a complete plant i could just probably just snip this off but i'm just gonna leave it as is um just put some sphagnum around it and let it do its thing and then uh remove some of this the star moss so you can see the star moss is kind of like like it's it's very dense this whole thing was covered in a layer of star moss and i think maybe some of these runners weren't able to protrude out into the surface because of how dense it was but yeah i'm just gonna keep working on it and see how it goes so i don't know what's going on with this pot there seems to be a lot of other mosses in there i'm gonna pick those out yeah I maybe need to replace the whole top layer of moss there um and then this guy i let dry out a bit so looking a bit sad uh yeah never let your plants dry out so just pull off all the dead pictures. Seems to be coming back though. Um, but yeah, nothing too much to say about those. So I'm now just cleaning out some of the Nepenthe side. And this this side is like a nightmare. Um, so if you don't know, Nepenthes, uh, they grow real fast. Uh, it's only been like one and a half years and it's basically, uh, it, it's grown way too much. Um, I need to find like a grow tent instead of a terrarium. Cause I think the terrarium, you know, for helium flora and maybe some of those very small Nepenthes are fine, but any normal like medium-sized nepenthes a medium-sized nepenthes grows like from here to here right that, that's medium size a large size gets kind of like a huge vine like it, it can grow to the size of like a, a small bush so you know not they don't all stay small like uh, very few of them stay real small so a few of them might be nice like look look this jacqueline has a few nice little pictures this one's doing real well for me uh i don't know if i could get this picture to show up on the camera but yeah Real nice looking pictures. I really like the wine glass shaped pictures. So Jacqueline's fine. This is Dubia, Dubia Star Divine. I moved all my other plants outside. They're all on the floor for now, and it's kind of a mess. But I need to un I had to like untangle all the pictures. They were all like in each other, and all the roots were crossing into each other's pots. Some of these pots are like way too small for the size of the plant they are at. So like for example, this guy is huge, but look at the tiny little pot. Like the roots are growing outside of the pot. This is a 
teeny tiny little pot. So I probably need to repot that guy. Not sure if I'll do it today though, but yeah, they were all like, all the pitchers were getting into each other. Um, this is the, what was this guy? Uh, started with a B, I think, or... Barcelona, yeah. Barcelona, this guy's gotten huge. So I need to set up some little trellis for them or something. Uh, I just stuck that a guy in for now, but I, they're kind of like flopping over. Um, so yeah, the, this thing is... is I'm going to need to see if I can grow on my windowsill and uh, inside the terrarium because it's just way too big. Um, so yeah, these things grow up fast. Some of them haven't grown as fast for me, but some of them have just taken off. Like this guy uh, was tiny when it first arrived, and now it is freaking huge. Well, this is Enmei, so you can see the little little hook on the picture. This picture was a bit smushed beside some other plants, but uh, that's not even the most recent picture. The most recent one is just opening up. Like, look at it. It's just getting humongous now, and I can't I can't take care of them anymore because they're just outgrowing their enclosures. So... Yeah, this is a uh, Chiana. Anyways, we'll take a look at them after I put them back in the terrarium or something. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure right now. I'm like winded from like moving all of them out. So uh, this is a. Uh, uh, oh man, I forget the name of all of these. Rianwartiana. Re it's some sort of red form of Rianwartiana. Not really that red because I think my LED lights have decreased in power over the years. You know, LED lights they go down in efficiency real fast. It gets to 80% real fast. But this thing is just filled with pitcher fluid. This thing is heavy. It's like half filled with fluid right now. So it's like, it thumps when I drop it, right? And it's, uh, it, that's, I, I don't put pitcher, I, I don't put water in the pitcher fluids or, uh, myself or anything. It just fills it up itself. Uh, so yeah, it's really likes that pitcher fluid. So some of them haven't done as well. So I think that's Sibuanensis. Maybe it's too cold for it. Sometimes it gets down to like 12 Celsius in my terrarium, and it, that's maybe a bit too cold. Um, also, what, another plant that I, I really like, but it hasn't done well, was my, uh, what was this? Jamban. So Jamban has kind of suffered a bit. It has a whole bunch of basils now, though, but I think it, it was like crushed underneath all of the plants. I didn't even know there was a pot there because it was just buried under all the other plants. So I don't even think it was getting any light, and yeah, it was kind of suffering a bit. So I'll, I'll have to move it back to a better spot. But yeah, some of these guys getting way too big. And the Pentis, they they grow fast. They're not they're not small plants. <laughs> uh, there's a few small ones, but even like you know when they say Ampullaria stay small, Ampullaria grow to the size of a bush. So, you know, another thing I need to do is uh, I need to clean up the moss. So that's why I'm kind of taking these guys out. Uh, you can see the sphagnum. This is sphagnum over here, but over here it's like star moss, right? So I want to remove some of the star moss so that it doesn't like infest my entire. I mean, this is after a, uh, one and a half years of growth, so it's not that bad. It doesn't grow that fast, but we'll take care of it now rather than later. Um, and then this is divining dubia. Dubia, this is like its first upper kind of thing. It's still kind of maybe half intermediate, but it's getting there. And dubia has some very sticky picture of fluid, so like, uh, it's not sticky, it's more like slimy. Uh, so like you can see this one. So this picture, for some reason, uh, was different than the others in that it just filled itself up to the brim with picture fluid. Like it was absolutely at the top it might have been just overflowing through the sides too but i didn't add any water to it i was really careful when spraying down my terrarium with like water um to not get any more water in there because it was just overflowing but now it's spilled out a bit uh so now it's not at the brim anymore because i was moving all my other plants around and some of it spilled out into my water tray but yeah so like if i touch this pitcher fluid with my finger you could see uh you could see like it's stringing already Right, let me get my camera a bit better. So let me put my finger in there again. Oh my god, it's hard to do with one hand. Uh, come on, come on, come on. Just put my finger in there. And pull it out. You can see, it's like, uh, I'd say like dish soap. Um, it has like a surfactant or something in the pitcher fluid. And that, I guess, probably helps with catching, um, catching bugs. Because like if a fly just falls into like just straight up water, um, it's it, the surface tension of the water like maybe it can might it might be able to vault itself off the water and escape whereas if there's some surfactant in there it's like st stick to it uh, its wings and everything and there's no getting out from that and this is a jamban uh, not jamban this is jacqueline so jacqueline i think i already mentioned yeah very nice i think jacqueline also has some sticky picture fluid not sure put my finger in there oh yeah it's it's definitely sticky <laughs> so same thing uh but yeah uh, i need to figure out what to do with this guy. Uh, this one doesn't have any basils yet, but you could see that at every single node, there's a little, little, uh, 
platelet ready to go. So that, that node right there, every single node. It, you, you, could, you could do a cutting er, at every node and a new plant that would form but it's, I, I'm not itching to get that many dubia right now I mean I could maybe get some for trades but right now I just want to clean it up a bit so that it doesn't like flop over like this so I'll have to wash out the water tray you know it's a little bit of allergy growing in there and all my pitcher fluids kind of spilled into my water tray anyways um, and yeah it's, uh, it's a lot of work here's the one of the neps Jacqueline. You can see how wild the sphagnum has gotten over the past few years. A bit of slime here that I'll probably remove and a bunch of this little messy little moss. And I already started snipping off some of the dead leaves but I'll clean up a bit. But it looks like, yeah, look at all these growth points. There's like one here, one here, one here. I don't know, there's so many. Uh, but yeah, let me clean this up a bit. So this guy I think is a Zachariano or something like that. Uh, forget his name tag is buried somewhere in there let me try to see yeah so this one's a Zachariana and uh, yeah you can see it has some infestation of star moss in the corner here so I'm just gonna like basically rip out whatever large chunks of moss I see that's infected and then replace it with some fresh moss so yeah this plant's not doing that bad so I just finished cleaning up the tank. Uh, it took a while, but I guess, uh, you know, I've been putting it off for over a year now. So I finally got through with it. And I just did like a little bit a day. So it's been a few days since I first made the start of the video. Um, so things might have grown a bit. Uh, but yeah, yeah, let's uh, take a tour of the plants and uh, see what's going on. I've got some new additions uh, and some old plants have gotten kind of big now. Uh, here's a new addition, so I'll just go around and, you know, do a circle or something like that. This is, uh, Healing for Angosema or something like that, um, I forget the actual name, but, uh, I think it might not even be a true species yet, it's just, like, a location name or something like that, and, uh, I just got it, so these are the pictures it came with, they're kind of shriveling up now because of the transplant shock, um, but, yeah, I'm waiting for it to grow its, uh, picture, you can see the shadow of a new picture appearing down there, uh, usually I keep it in a baggie. I just removed the baggie for the filming this so it's easier to film. Uh, but yeah, like, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's picture walls are kind of like leathery now. So I thought that maybe because it was drying out. So I put the baggie over it usually just to keep it a bit more humid just in case. Better be safe than sorry. Over here are just some little divisions I've been working with. Uh, as I was pulling out the moss, the star moss, uh, like these guys just came out in chunks. I guess they were just little uh, divisions that were ready to go already. I think one of them is a uh, Newton's and one of them is a minor. Um, just from those two pots back there. Not sure if the Newtons is a true Newtons. Uh, we'll get to it later on as I go around, but I don't think it's a actually true Newtons. We'll see. Uh, I guess let me go around the glass here so it's easier to see. Walk around here. See these guys over here. These are some uh, the, the Drosera and Angelica? Was it? Not Angelica. Uh, Adelaide. Jeez, can't speak today. Uh, Drosera Adelaide. So you know, I think I said, I said last time that I was going to pot it in a wider pot so that it's easier for me to pull out the little divisions off of it to keep the mother plant big. Otherwise, it's it just using its energy stores on all these divisions. But uh, since I haven't maintained the tank at all, that's kind of gone out the window. I also need to snip off those flowers because the last time it flowered, it got real small. I think the actual main mother plant died. It's like a little bit to the right. It's kind of those dead leaves down there you could see. And then it sprouted a new mother plant right beside it. Um, what, what happened was my terrarium got real cold like during the winter um, it went down to like 12 celsius every night and I think that was just way too cold for like Adelaide's and all that so um, you know I got to move them to a, a cooler but not like 12 degrees celsius cold terrarium up front here is also another new addition this is a minor pilosa minor bar pilosa um, you can see it's a bit more hairier little tufts of hair on it it's pretty neat We'll see how it does. There's a few new pictures on it, but so far it's just uh, basically, you know, nothing, nothing too exciting about it yet. And then there's some random Venus fly traps that I've been experimenting with, just testing to see if they like the higher humidity. Over here are some more heel helis. Um, back here, this guy I think is a nebulae. Not sure if it's a true nebulae. I mean, it's from a very re reputable source, but uh, it doesn't have that stripe down the middle. And that stripe might not appear until it gets more mature though. Uh, like this is still like nebulae can get real, real big 
and this is still like tiny in comparison. So maybe it'll take a while. Here's an Uncinata. So I've, this guy here is an Uncinata and the one back in the back left corner is also Uncinata, that big clump. It was all juvenile pictures before, but now it's like getting some more mature-ish pictures. They're not like, you know, fully grown mature pictures because they should be real big. Uh, but, you know, the morphology is getting there. So a whole bunch of little mature pictures in there. Same for the little division up here. So pretty happy with that. Uh, behind Uncinata in the middle there, back middle, that's a Macrodonalde. It's still a juvenile, so nothing to talk about other than I have a bunch of red moss in that pot. Um, and the moss was just taking over it. I, I trimmed it down a bit and I moved that red moss to other pots. This is a, a Newton's, I think, um, from one of the locations. Uh, and uh, Newton's, maybe, I don't know if my camera could pick it up, but Newton's has uh, golden hairs on it. So you could see like the hairs. Um, it's, it's very easy to see in real life, like with the human eye, but I don't know if the camera could pick it up. It has to be at the right angle. So that picture at the very back there, the large one, you kind of see the golden hairs on it at this angle. But I think Newton's and so, uh, some other, a few other ones, uh, species also have golden hairs. So usually the hairs are silverish, so you could see the Uncinata hair is clearly silver. There's no angle where it's gold, whereas the Newton ones, it shimmers like a strong gold color at certain angles and it's kind of interesting. I think Ionassi is also another one that does that. We could see it later on. I also have one of those and up here uh, in the um, back right there, uh, we'll, try, we'll just go around the terrarium, is a Sarcinioides. So that guy back there, Sarcinioides. It was flowering a lot, a whole bunch of flowers. I cut off all the flower stalks because they were just withering away. I didn't really pollinate them or anything. Didn't really have time to mess with that but yeah it's getting pretty big, pretty nice. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it. Might need to make a few divisions soon because it seems to be multiple growth points in there. Uh, let's move over. This guy here, just some um, Rora Julas. I put in here just to test to see if it likes these conditions, you know, with the humidity and all that. Um, I had a Rora Dula before, but it died to to due to some fungal infection and it infected like the whole pot. So um, this time I split them up into multiple different pots and different locations just to make sure if one like gets that infection, they don't all die. Um, that's another part of Uncinata juveniles, um, just divisions. Back there, the Nepenthes there is a new addition. That's a uh, Rob Cantilei, and uh, we'll see how it does. You know, um, it's definitely not enough space in this terrarium once it gets big. But hopefully, you know, by that time I'll get like a grow tent or something. Uh, and then to the right, that Gliamphora, that is what was it? Hispida. That Hispida before, I think last time in my other video, it was all the way at the back corner, at the very, very far back corner, and I don't, I don't even think I showed it off. I said it might be dying back there. Yeah, it was like, um, had a bunch of dead pictures. I don't know why. Maybe it was the lighting, maybe it was the temperature, um, but it didn't really like it back there. So now I moved it up front there here just so I could keep an eye on it, just make sure it doesn't like collapse on in on itself. Uh, and it seems to be doing okay so far. I see a new picture popping up, so we'll see how it goes. And then behind that is uh, Nepenthes uh, tenues, I think. You could see it uh, has a little picture growing, just kind of opened up. So it seems pretty nice. It's a cutting. And um, when I got it, the actual growth point started dying. Uh, Might have been some damage during shipping or something. But it sprouted another growth point out of that. So at least uh, it's still alive. And it seems to be doing okay now. So we'll see how it goes. Over here, are some more divisions of. of uh, I think that's uh, uh, whatever this was. Uh, uh, helium for uh, what was it? Pochella? Yeah, I think it's Pochella. Uh, so the divisions of the Pochella, and then this is the minor, uh, just a minor, what was this from? Carnivorous Plant Society or something like that? Carnivorous Plant Nursery. So I uh, got that from. These were my first test plants from a while ago. This one didn't do that well. Um, uh, it, it started like getting some sort of like fungal infection? I don't actually know. Maybe it was an infection. Maybe yeah, I sprayed it down with some fungicide. Seems to have kind of recovered. So some of the pictures are coming back, but yeah, it, it kind of died down a bit. Um, behind it is the Newtons also from Carnivorous Plant Nursery. So yeah, I want to talk about this Newtons. I don't actually think this is a true Newtons. If anyone has a Newtons from Carnivorous Plant Nursery, uh, tell me, tell me something about it. Maybe it's a hybrid or something like that. You can see like the nectar spoon doesn't look right. Um, as to what a Newton should look like. But I don't know if it's just because it needs to get bigger. It needs to be more mature before it actually displaces morphology. But it looks more like a perforensense or some sort of hybrid or something like that. So I can't really tell. 
Uh, down here in this corner is my Shizandaras. The, the mother plant died, but all the pups are still alive and it's making new pups. Again, I think it was like the 12 degrees Celsius killed it, killed it off. It was just too cold. I think the cold air is blowing through the channel underneath here and hitting it directly and it didn't really like it over the winter. Uh, so I had to think about how to fix that later on. And some pots of various sphagnum moss, there's some, some red varieties I'm trying to get to, to propagate. They grow like way too slow. Uh, and then some orange ones down here. Uh, so yeah, we'll, just, we'll see how it goes. Uh, and then some more Adelaide's. We won't talk about these too much. They're nothing, nothing too interesting to look at. They kind of died back a bit because they were just way too cold and I also haven't been watering them. Um, I don't really care about the Adelaide's too much. There's <laughs> just way too many of them now. I just need to get rid of them. Uh, here is, uh, I like this, I like this pot. I need to repot it to something bigger. But yeah, this is uh, Pochella. And then I have some really nice looking pictures up front here. Look, look how hairy it is. Again, like, you normally Helium Flora have silvery hairs. So you can see how it's all silvery. Only a few varieties have golden hairs. Pachella's one with the silvery hair. Very hairy. This picture looks like it's uh, finally, like, I would say maturish. And Pachella, uh in one of my first videos, I was complaining about, you know, the, does it have that little indentation where the lid is in, on the picture? And I was wondering if it was a true species or not. Seems like, yeah, it needs to be more mature because you could see the indentation in there now. Um, whereas on some of the more juvenile mature pictures, or quote unquote mature pictures, they're not as apparent. You could see like, you know, the difference in the nectar spoon, like the little points, these are kind of uh, juveniles, like this guy right here, whereas the ones with the big spoons are probably more mature. So the clump back here is, seems to have matured up and has a whole bunch of flower stalks. I probably should cut these off because uh, it's probably draining its energy. Um, and then some, some of the ones at the edge here are really red. So you can see even in the same plant, in the same clone, you have various pictures of different colors, different sizes, different maturities. So who knows when you buy like a cultivar or something, if it's just a random fluke of environments and hormones and age. Who knows? Uh, so yeah, down here is a random Loei that's also new. Um, I don't know why I got it. It was just on sale. And uh, I bundled it with shipping of another plant. I think it was uh, one of these guys. Maybe it was this guy. This was a uh, uh, Nepenthes uh, red hairy hamada. That's with the diabolica. Um, still very, very tiny. Uh, but yeah, one of the more expensive Nepenthes out there. I thought I'd try it out. And then it's just tiny. <laughs> Even at this small size, it's more expensive than a lot of other plants. Uh, we'll see how it goes. This is uh, another Rob Cantley eye. So I have two, uh, but they're from different like sources. That one was sea grown from a certain, uh, I forgot the name of the person, but it's on the tag. And then this one is from a nursery. I think it's from the nursery, it's also seed grown, but they have various clones of various seed grown ones. Um, the, the pictures that came with have started drawing out and we'll see how it does with the new picture it's forming. Uh, so they're kind of new, so nothing too interesting there to show off. Here's a Vecchii, uh, it's gotten kind of big. I need to uh, probably repot it and probably need to move it out of the terrarium. Again, I need to get like a grow tent or something. But yeah, this uh, Vecchia is just a random one, one of the Highland varieties, but it's not like a, not like a squat or a striped one or anything. It's just a normal Vecchia. See, it's got the bronze, bronze peristome kind of thing. So not too like spectacular. Like y'all, even though like you know, for a Vecchia, it looks pretty nice. But there's nicer ones. So I might end up selling this one off and uh, trying to get one of the squat forms or something like that. Down here, buried in a red moss, um, is a, a hamata, just a regular hamata. Uh, from some location, I forget which one it was, one of the, one of the locations. But uh, yeah, it's, it's still a baby, but it's got the little, nice little teeth on it. And look at the little hairy lid. It's kind of getting hidden behind this vitriol leaf here. They really like to get buried in this uh, moss. Uh, so yeah, I need to trim off the red moss here, but I kind of left it until after I finish this video, because I thought the, the the pad of moss here looked really nice. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna, probably going to cut off the little red bits and move them to the other hamada pot here. Have red hairy hamada and red sphagnum. Might do well together. <laughs> and then back there behind that is uh, Aristocoloides. Still a little baby. It's made a few pictures in my care, but they're all super, super tiny. So Aristocoloides, one of the one of the smaller varieties in the Pensees, but you know, once it starts gets vining, it would still still reach a considerable size. Uh, here is a random, uh, I think this is Diatis. It was buried in this jungle of Neps. All the way in the middle there, it was getting crushed. It wasn't getting any light. So it hasn't been doing too well. I don't even think it has any good pictures on it. These pictures were kind of getting like crushed between two pots or something. 
So it's making a new one. We'll see how it does. Uh, put it out in the light so I get some more light. Here are two uh, Hummer's Giant Cephalotus pots. I think this one I didn't do any dormancy. I just kept it in the terrarium the whole time. And in this one, uh, yeah, I also moved it in. It also didn't have a dormancy, but it was also flowering. Um, but yeah, they seem to be doing better than the ones outside, I would say. You know, more pictures and everything. Um, probably because of the higher humidity. So, you know, it's also made a little, like, a uh, little another division down there. It's going through one of the holes in the pot that I cut for airflow. All right, so this side contains the big jungle of Nepenthes. It, I feel like it's gotten messier now that I clean it up because, you know, I kind of had to separate the pots up a bit. And they were kind of growing into each other. The root systems were all combined together. It was a huge mess. Um, and this is after maybe a year and a half of growth. And so, like, Nepenthes, they, they grow kind of fast, right? <laughs> They're not like some cacti, some succulents that can be several years, maybe 20 years for, like, a bonsai before it gets any appreciable size or caudex growth and these guys after a year it's already way too big and i need to move them out maybe to um a grow tent or something um, i don't think they're suitable for a terrarium so one of the worst offenders is the barcelona it's it's like a little bush now it's got um, a whole bunch of pictures way too many for me to, to maintain some of them are kind of sticking out of the terrarium now i gotta like tuck them in so that they don't get cut off by the glass but yeah um way too many pictures of various sizes various shapes all down in there a few new ones budding off so Barcelona a bunch of growing points down there too um, it's kind of a bush I try to try to fix it up a bit with some trellis here hopefully I could control it a bit but yeah eventually I need to move it out and also another big offender is this uh, I think this is MA it has a little fleshy bit underneath the picture so this is the newest picture that it just opened up we just opened up a few couple of days ago. So it hasn't really colored up yet. But it's huge. And look at the little fleshy bit. MA is known for this little hook. I get the focus right on the camera, this little hook thing. And it's usually covered with sticky sticky nectar there for some reason. <clears throat> but yeah, here's an older picture. You can see how the, the coloration is deeper on this or darker on this older picture. But this guy's getting also way too big. It's taking over its corner back there. Um, I took each each pot out, untangled everything, cleaned up all the moss. It took a while, and I couldn't shove them all back in in the same spots because they're just getting too big. So like some of them kind of spilled over. That's why the diatis is on that side now, and then this jacqueline is over here. They were all in there before, but yeah, I need to find another spot for them. This was a no, sorry, this is a. This is a jambin, not jacqueline. This is my jacqueline right here. And this jacqueline was buried in the middle there. It's getting crushed by all the other plants. I think there's like a picture sitting on it and everything. So it wasn't doing that great. I don't even think it was getting any light. So you can see it has a whole bunch of little growth points. It's probably like the death throes, you know, like, you know, I'm going to die anyways. Try to divide up as much as I can before I die kind of thing. But hopefully I saved it now. And you can see all of these little growth points are all very spindly, right? They're all like ghostly white and kind of weak looking. And that's because it wasn't getting any light down there at all. It was just completely buried by all the other leaves. So I moved it out now. Hopefully it will harden up a bit and then it will start picturing up again. Uh, so it was definitely doing better last time I, I, was, I looked at it. Now it's kind of dying back. Uh, over here is this big vine also getting way too big. It is, uh, oh, came off the trellis a bit. Let me put that back up. Maybe I'll take care of it after the video if I can't take care of it right now. But this is uh, a dubia. So it started vining. And once they start vining, man, they, it, it grows fast. It's like a little little speeder here so it's gotten way big it has one upper here there is one upper picture pretty nice I, I really like these wine glass shaped pictures but I think this is still kind of halfway between an upper and an intermediate we'll see in the next picture it gets um, but when they when they start vining the pictures don't happen that often so we'll see but yeah it's real cool maybe I need to put some little fertilizer pellets in there right now so you can see I, I don't feed them at all and uh, yeah, it seems to be doing nice. Um, another plant that's getting way too big is my Rian Wartiana. This is like the red form of Rian Wartiana. See, so making some pictures back here. It's bleeding over into the other water tray. Just went down there. Big picture back there in the corner. And um, yeah, they're they're just filled with pitcher fluid. For some reason, this plant makes a lot of pitcher fluid, and the pictures are very heavy. But I'm gonna need to figure it out how to. Uh, Handle this guy. You can see he's making another picture here. 
and it's just it's just way too big. Uh, what else do I have? There's a uh, Izume down there. Nothing too interesting to talk about. And its pictures are really black, so it looks like they're dead, but they're actually not dead. They're just really really dark looking. Uh, but it's still a juvenile, so nothing too much to talk about that. And there's a few other plants back there, very far back. I think Sibiuninensis, um, Chiana. Chiana's the little green one. These green pictures are from Chiana, I think. And then there's a Berbigier, juvenile little Berbigier here. And then there's a Zachariana. Uh, that's it's way too far in the back for me to dig dig through it. But they're still all juveniles, so nothing too much to talk about there. Um, but yeah, it's just way too much of a jungle. I need to find the grow tent and uh, figure out how to cool the grow tent. And uh, my plan is to use a little air conditioner unit and maybe not make it as cold as this terrarium. And I could put my Shazendaras and Adlays in there um, because 11 degrees Celsius is a bit too cold. Here, uh, up here, up front here, some helium forods, some new additions. This one is, uh, what was it, Hubrii? And then beside it is an Ionasi. So most of these are new, so nothing too much to talk about. It's making a new picture here. And this guy also made a new picture. I don't know if the camera will catch it, but yeah, I said Ionasii is another one with um, golden pit hairs. Let's see if we could look at it. Yeah, there's no way that catches on camera. It's something that you could really only see with the human eye. Because the camera, I don't think it has the right dynamic range or whatever to to catch the little glimmer of gold on those hairs. But you gotta just take my word for it. That they're golden. Um, and then behind that, I mean, you could kind of see like, see, see how these hairs are, are kind of not shining white? Whereas on this uh, Pachella, they're very white. Oh, sorry, this isn't a Pachella, is this? This is a minor, burgundy black. So, again, yeah, the hairs are white on the minor. But yeah, the burgundy black, uh, not as dark as it could be. I think it's uh, it's in the back there. It's getting a bit less light. And also, um, <clears throat> the power of my LEDs has decreased over the past two years. Uh, so LEDs, they degrade as you use them. So it quickly drops off to like 80% of its efficiency. And you need to like bump up the power to compensate, which I haven't been doing. So my lights are probably only 80% as bright as before. So yeah, the burgundy black. Has some uh, red sphagnum up in the front there, but it's getting like overtaken by the other colors of sphagnum. I think I need to, uh, you know, trim off the other sphagnum a bit more because I like the red sphagnum a bit more than the other colors. It's doing okay. Maybe I need to divide it up a bit because it's getting kind of crowded in there. And it, it isn't really that mature. So I would say the minor um, pitcher, like the little nectar spoons, can be more, way more defined. Right now it's just little stubs. You could see even on the biggest picture, there's just little points. And that indicates that it hasn't really fully matured yet. <clears throat> Over here, on the right side here, there's another clump of Heliumphora. I think this is a uh, Trinomatensis. It flowered a bit, but I let it dry out. The pot completely dried out one day, and then it kind of died back. But it's doing okay now. It's still alive. Down there is a Pochella. It's still a juvenile little Pochella. Uh, and behind that... Uh, what, what was that? That was a parva, I think. So I'm not sure if it's a true form of parva. Came from a reputable grower, so maybe it is. But we'll see once it gets a bit older. And then in the very, very far back is um, one of the lowland forms of healing for Salada, I think. So I grow it in kind of a highland conditions, and it's doing really good. Like, look at the pictures. They're very well well-defined they look real nice with their their shape and everything so and then in the middle middle left there that's another pochella it's from a different location than the other ones i have but uh, we won't talk too much about it i think it's also trying to flower but yeah uh let me talk this guy back in so my glass doesn't break it and uh, some other little ceph divisions they're just typicals seedlings and then there's a tray of um red sphagnum moss i'm trying to grow probably let it dry out a bit too much so it hasn't grown too much each time you, you dried them out they they basically die and get sent back 
And then uh, these are parts of uh, X Pendiculata. So this is a typical X Pendiculata. It's getting big. And you can see how in the past they were way more red. So I think my LEDs were way brighter. And now uh, only the very, very old pictures have colored up. And it takes a while for the new ones to also color up to the same same degree. But it's growing there. It's it's doing really nice. Probably needs a division and a repot. Same for the Ewok form of X Pendiculata. This is the X, X Pendiculata Ewok. So Ewok is a bit more hairy. See the little tufts of hair on it. Whereas for the non, the normal one, it still, it still has a few little bits of hair, but it's not as hairy, definitely. Right? Whereas the Ewok is real hairy. The Ewok is also a bit smaller, right? And it's, it's shorter. And it definitely needs a division because uh, it's basically completely overflowing its pot and its roots and everything were kind of growing out of the pot and everything when I was trimming it. So I need some work. Back there is a, a Newton's. I think I mentioned that this guy was, uh, I thought it was dead. Look, it's uh, bounced back. It completely died. Like there was zero visible life on the surface, right? And uh, I gave up on it, but I just left the pot in there and eventually it came back. Um, and it came back with several gross points. So, doing real nice. Uh, up here, this is a, uh, what was it? Kalina? I think it was a Kalina. So, one new picture came up. Uh, I think I think the other one is also under my care. has grown, but it's pretty new, and I think it's making a flower stalk now. So that's that's a little flower stalk that's coming up in the middle there. Yeah, that's a flower stalk. Pretty cool. Oops. And then there's a few more new new additions. I just got these a few days ago. Uh, this one was uh, I think this is another another parva. Yeah, parva. But this one is some um, red form. Uh, with tuba clone 13.3. I remember I remember this was a red one or something. Uh, but I, I saw that this parva, like, it's really hairy. Compared to my my parva over here. And my parva isn't as hairy. <clears throat> so I thought I'd try out this under clone just to see if there's any differences. And then this is uh, another minor. A little baby juvenile minor. And then here is um, Jamban. So Jamban is another one of my favorite Nepenthes species because of the little wine glass shaped pictures. This is still kind of an intermediate picture. It's not really an upper picture yet. But yeah, look at it go. It's filled with fluid and everything. You can kind of see, see, see it through the, the shadow there. And that's the, that's the most recent one. It's growing another one over here. And yeah. Uh, I think it's doing okay. Likes its growing conditions probably. And I had to move it out of the, the clump of uh, jungle there just because it was getting kind of yeah crushed underneath all the other plants. But yeah. Uh, so a, a bit more maintenance that I need to do. Um, like I need to clean up that little pot of sphagnum over there. And a few of these new pots need sphagnum topped off on it. So uh, that's so far the, the top portion of material. Let's uh, move to the bottom. All right, let's take a look at some of the plants on the bottom. Um, I had to get a different uh, phone to record here because my other one ran out of battery. So hopefully the color and everything stays the same. I think this camera might be better. So we'll see. Um, also, it's really cold in my place right now. I don't usually keep my heat on if I'm not, you know, home or whatever. And uh, yeah, the floor is really cold that I'm sitting on. And it's pretty good for the plants actually because the cold conducts into the pots. And if any of them need dormancy temperatures, it's there for them. Um, and yeah. Uh, let's start over at some of these pink beetle on the corner here. Everything is still kind of dormant, um, but a few of them are flowering. The purple ones here are a Hersei. So here is an El Hersei from a, a location, a smaller one from a different location. So interesting that it's a bit smaller. And then the pinkish one is another different location, right? So these are all El Herseis. But <clears throat> all of them look a bit different. And then the white ones are Rotundifolia. But the actual plant is still kind of dormant in its hibernacula. And then uh, in the far back, there's some morinensis. And then in the very far back, the three pots are some tequitos. But you could see like how the one on the very, very far left is a bit more purplish than the other ones. So that's interesting. They should all be the same clone, right? I don't know why. There's also a flower here from the tequito. Not sure if the camera will pick it up. And then... um. There's a few new additions. There's an Agnata red form, and then there's a couple of hibernacular bulbs down there. That's a bulb of uh, 
what was it? Uh, Heterophylla? And then you're very far back, a hibernacula of whatever that's called. Caldenii? So I don't know, I don't know. I'm butchering their names. Uh, Gypsy Cola, Hibernacula up in the front here. And then uh, Giganti. And the only only pink cola I can say that's not doing as good is probably this Miranda. This Miranda, I don't know why it's not doing that great. And I think the little division I had of it also died out. Maybe it's a bit too cold. Here are my 3D printed pots. They're still holding strong. So I'll probably just 3D print more pots now because they seem to be doing fine. And then the plants in there are also doing okay. And they're kind of dormant. So I think I, if I zoom in, there's a little baby um, or hibernacles of Rotanifolia. And this is Brevifolia. Still little baby seedlings. All these seedlings I got from um, the seeds I got from the Flytrap Store seed bank. So you could join the Flytrap Store uh, forums if you want to get in on that. Really nice. And then here's a Ceph of a vigorous clumping clone. It has some interesting boot shaped pictures. Kind of like the Banadito form. But, uh, you know, it's the Ceph Lotus just has various different, you know, morphologies and everything based on um, growing conditions because I have the exact same clone of it here. This is also uh, a vigorous clumping form, and you can see its pictures are not all bent like a boot. So, you know, maybe it's uh, different acidities of the soil, different temperatures, different lighting conditions can cause different shapes of the picture. So, yeah, when you buy cephalotus and someone claims that it's like a, <clears throat> a variety, like a dark form or weirdly shaped form, you got to be careful because they're very uh, temperamental in how they express them, their pictures. And uh, you could just be buying the typical, right? Same for a lot of these named clones because <laughs> uh, sometimes it's just cephalotus with someone's name attached to it. And it's honestly no different than uh, typical. And it's getting kind of insane now on like eBay. I see some of these plants go for hundreds of dollars for something that should only be like $50. It'll be like a size like smaller than this. So this I would say maybe will go for $60 if it's a fair price. But if you call it the vigorous clumping clone, suddenly its price shoots up. Even though nothing here uh, indicates that is any different from a typical one, right? Is this more vigorous and more clumping than any other stuff? I'm not too sure. So here's a... Dr. Edward Koenig's clone. So just another named form. But again, these are all typicals. Uh, here's another, I think this is a Hummer's Giant Division that I moved from my pot of sphagnum moss over here. Um, but it's not doing too great. I think I let his pot dry out too much. Uh, hopefully it's still alive. We'll see if it comes back later on. This is a uh, uh, Hummer's Giant mother plant. So the mother plant isn't doing as much. Like it's basically stayed the same. I think last year I let it flower and maybe the flowering drained its energy too much. But uh, its divisions are doing much better. So like here, these guys back here are my Hummer's Giant's divisions. And look at this big big picture on it. This guy is huge. Right? This picture is gigantic. So yeah, real nice. They could probably get bigger if I give them less light. Because Hummer's Giant pictures, uh, if you give them too much light, they're, they're a bit smaller. But a bit more red. <clears throat> Back there, this is um, this is another Hummer's Giant division, and this is uh, the Queen Mary. Queen Mary isn't doing too much right now; it's still kind of in dormancy. And you got a kind of like a um, fungal infection with the powdery mildew, and I think it flowered last year, so it wasn't doing too hot. It was losing a lot of its energy. Hopefully, it bounces back this year. This is my Eden Black, not looking too black at the moment, uh, mainly because I think uh, you know again the, the power of my LEDs has decreased over time, so I didn't bump up their wattage to compensate so they're getting less light than before um, and also it was get, it was kind of far from my lights so I, I raised it up just yesterday like off these little cup here um, just to see if, it, if I give it a bit more light if it will color up a bit more so we'll see if it gets a bit darker by being closer to the light I know the lighting is like some inverse square law or something so it's much more stronger when you get closer to it but we'll see if it colors up but the star of the show, I think, is this guy here. This is the Charles Boer Red. <clears throat> and it is really black. So I think um, I heard online it goes by maybe another name, like um, Mad Red or something like that. I forget the actual name of it. But look how black it is. My camera can barely pick it up. And uh, when you look at it in real life, this one is, like, really dark looking. So, wow. Definitely the star of the show right now. But once the Eden black colors up, hopefully it will be able to compete again. 
with this guy. And if you look at it from afar, like the one that definitely stands out is different than all the other ones. <laughs> it's definitely this guy, right? It's a bit more colored up than some of the other plants. Um, but yeah, uh, back here is, uh, down here, this is the German giant. Uh, no, this one's the German giant. And this one's a big boy. And big boy is supposed to be a bit darker also. But I think I need to repot it. This pot, it gets dries out way too often. So, let's see if we get some good looking pictures in there. Anyways, that's the big boy. German giant is actually known for not being as colorful and it seems to reign true. Like, it's uh, definitely not as colored up as all my other saps, even though it's directly in the middle of my lights here. But yeah, it's hanging in there also. Probably also needs a repot. Uh, bubble giant over here. There's this guy. Not too sure what's supposed to be special about bubble giants. Maybe we'll see once I get some more pictures. And then here is the squat form. So squat form is one of the few forms where you could actually tell them apart from a typical one um, because of its uh, squat shaped pictures with a very prominent ridge down in the middle right here. There's a little ridge that sticks out. So yeah, that's interesting. And it seems to be doing uh, fine. It's, uh, it's uh, gotten these bigger, bigger and bigger pictures. Uh, hopefully it picks up even more during the summer. Oh yeah, pretty happy with this guy. Probably needs a repot though. And then nothing too much to say about, I think I already talked about other ones. This one was uh, some red lids or something like that. I forget, red, purple, which is another typical variety, some named. But yeah, yeah, pretty cool. But it's still the winter right now, so hopefully in the summer it'll pick up a bit. <clears throat> Over here is some uh, trays of seedlings, again, from the flat trap store and all that, and some compensies. Um, some gemme I'm trying to. I don't know how to pronounce that. Gemme, Gemme from Pygmy Sunnuses. I think this is a Scorpioides Gemme in this pot. You can see they have some big Gemmes. And then this is a pot of Pygmy Venus White Traps. So there, and this is the true Pygmy. This is way, way, way small. It's been like this size for like two years now or over one year. So I don't even know how to divide it because it's so small. And then here I'm trying some seedlings of Saracenia. I forget what species it was. Maybe it was Flava or something. Um, it's, it's labeled on the pot, but I don't want to pull it out. I need to read the label right now. Nothing too interesting because they're just all juveniles. More seeds of various types. Of Drosura. Uh, some Adleys. I'm trying outside. The Terrarium to see if they can grow outside. And yeah. Uh, here's a bunch of um, Pygmy Sundews with all the little Gemme on it. So I'm going to have another video showing you guys how I collect the gamay with a suction device because if you're going to go in and do this by hand if you touch this at all that whole blob of gamay will just blow up and it will spread everywhere so it's a it's a pain to uh, collect them all I already collected it from this pot using my suction device um, so I'll make a video on that if you want to see and then here's some spatulatas back there I think the cold is kind of causing them to die back a bit but they'll come back during the spring and summer and then some more gemme. I think that's another Scorpioides pot. It looks like the gemme is coming alive, so not doing too bad. And then on this side is all my Venus fly trap divisions from my flower stock cuttings. So I think I also made a video about how I was doing that. Uh, this year, I've started making a, a new pot to grow this the, the, the fly trap flower stock cuttings. Because last time I was using like a circular pot like this, and the problem with this pot was that it was drying out a lot. Um, and that was that was causing a lot of my setbacks. So I had a whole bunch more King Henry uh, flower, flower stock cuttings, but uh, uh, a lot of the little successful rooted cuttings or flower stock cuttings were not sprouted cuttings. They died because I let the pot dry out. So this time um, I have a new strategy and I'll show you guys maybe in another video. Uh, also a few more Royal Jula divisions. I have them everywhere now just in case one dies from a fungal infection. Um, and then here's a new addition. This is our Regia, Regia, I think it's Regia, but still acclimating it. We'll see how it does. And more pots of Gamay, nothing too interesting to talk about. So yeah, I'm not too sure what I'm going to do about all these Venus Fly Traps. Uh, they're all various cultivars. So this one's Pinnacle, TC, XL, and this one, so I like, put it on the pot, the name. There's another Pinnacle pot. A whole bunch of varieties 
from Firestock. This one's called Plenty Traps. I think that's just a random eBay typical one. That was called Plenty Traps by the Grower. And then this is ginormous. So, yeah, lots of different cuttings. And this one is Pygmy. So this is the, the larger Pygmy. So you can see my tr my really, really small Pygmy is way smaller than the actual <laughs> um, flower stock cuttings of this other Pygmy. This is the Neotinic Clone D type. I think I got this from Jeremiah on the on his store. But yeah, there seems to be even smaller pygmy forms. And then which one is this one? Southwest Giant. So a whole bunch in here. I won't talk about these too much. And then one interesting thing was this uh, pot of Drosophyllum seeds. So I think I, I sold these one year and five months ago, maybe? It was November 11th, um, over a year ago, right? And I thought they died because uh, nothing was sprouted. But I just recently saw a few little sprouts. That's crazy. It's been over a year. I thought they were dead. I let this pot completely dry out because I completely gave up on it. And then when I made this um, batch of Venus flytrap divisions, and now I started filling this water tray up with water, and then they sprouted. Well, a couple of them. So there's one in there, and the other one I transplanted here. <clears throat> so that is <laughs> a fun surprise, I guess. I did not expect those seeds to be still alive. I thought I just got scammed. But yeah, pretty cool. And if you don't know, Drosophyllum is one of the plants where, um, like if you think about a fern, like a fern unfurls its leaves like this, right? Like it comes out, or, or like a Drosera, like uh, if I look at this pygmy Drosera, right? The leaves unfurl, like uh, like how you would think a plant should unfurl its leaves. Um, uh, let me see how I describe this. Like if, if, if the middle here, where I'm pointing, is the middle of the plant, the leaves come out like this, right? How, how you would think leaves should come out as. Whereas Drosophyllum, it's completely opposite. If this is the middle, it will be positioned like here, and leaves will come out like this. So they will unroll themselves where like the, the, the um, this part of my wrist right here, closer to the compensus here, would be the middle of the plant. And then it will unfurl like outwards like that. Uh, so it, there's a name for it, and only a few plants do that, right? So you can even see, like in this little seedling here, if I zoom in, you can see how it's unfurling away from the middle. Right, the, it curls in the opposite direction of how you would think a fern will unfurl. So it's interesting how it does that, and only a few plants actually do that. And the vast majority of the plants that grow like that are actually carnivorous. So I think it's uh, the, the Drosophyllum species, and then there's Biblis. I think also kind of does that, and then might also be uh, the one that starts with T, the tri tritro something, trito something. Um, that one is kind of like half carnivorous, I guess. Uh, it, it has a non-carnivorous phase, and then it has a tree phase where it is carnivorous. I forget. I forget. Um, people don't usually grow that one, but yeah, that one's also unfurls in the in the weird way. Um, so that's yeah, probably just a fluke of evolution. There's really no way, no reason why unfurling the leaves in that way is linked with carnivory at all. Um, but it could be some like maybe some ancient genetic kind of thing where, you know, if your leaves unfurl that way, you have a uh, your glands produce some enzymes or something in a, in a different way that maybe makes carnivory more prevalent. But it could also be a fluke because there's only a few of these guys and just from like statistical chance you might get a, a higher percentage of carnivorous plants from this group. So yeah, it's kind of interesting to think about. <laughs> just finish off this video with uh, some footage of my self lotus seedlings. Remember I said my self lotus flowered last year, collected some seeds from it and I was trying to uh, see if they were viable or not and if I pollinated them correctly. And then I just keep them with uh, my, some of my desert plants. Um, they require a bit more warmth. So this is in my bedroom, which I keep a bit warmer. And it's also very dry in this room. It's only like 30% humidity. But it seems like they're still doing okay. The cephalosis seeds are doing okay. And of course, and all the desert plants are fine with that. I think this one is uh, Endinia globosa. It's pretty big. But yeah, um, some of them are going through dormancy. So they don't look as leafy right now as they could be. Uh, but yeah, these are the cephalotus seeds, and a few of them have actually sprouted. So I thought they were all dead, but apparently just they just take a while. So there's three seedlings there. I think there's a little seedling I see there. Right there. And then in this corner, I think I see another one with some little bits of moss. So yeah, so these are, most of them are just Hummer's Giant Cross with Hummer's Giant. Like, it was a self-cross. And then, uh, of course, you can't call it Hummer's Giant anymore. You can only divide cultivars by clones, not seeds. 
But we'll see what we get. I think in this pot, I didn't stratis stratify at all. Or all the, all the other ones I did stratify. Um, I can't even speak right now because my, my throat is dying. But uh, from talking so much. And uh, But yeah, it seems like you should definitely stratify the, the seeds because... Uh, the only purpose not to do it was that they sprout sooner and the plants can get bigger well as you wait for the uh, stratification process but it seems like i didn't get any sprouts in my in my pots here so there's no point i should just i should just have stratified them all so that i get more germination rates so yeah we'll see how they do maybe i'll need to wait a bit more before more sprout um, and we get some more conclusive results but it's been a while already and only i've only gotten gotten a few sprouts so we'll see but yeah, I think I'll finish it off there, and uh, thanks for watching.